to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. What is going on? It is Tuesday, July 28th, and we are the Fantasy Footballers. Welcome to another show. Say hello, boys. Hello, boys. That's no, his no. voice post Hawaii. The whole show. It's yeah, well, no, my voice, back, buddy. Hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> If everybody saw our Twitter account, you knew how uh, beastly <laughs> Mike. I you, have, you were worked out the entire time. I've been. I was getting ready. Got to get that beach body for when you go to Hawaii. Yes, yes. Welcome to the show. <laughs> My goodness, do you smell that? The NFL is in the air. Oh man, training camps. It is a strong aroma. It is almost here. If you are tun- tuning in, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What? We're, what would the NFL actually smell like? It money. Can't be, it it can, smells like money. Yeah. It cannot be anything pleasant. Well, I don't know. Money. 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 Smells yeah, it smells like money, buddy. Okay. Well, All right. If you're joining us for the funky. first time, hey, if this is your first time listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, we say hello. Hello. Greetings. Hello. Salutations. <laughs> we are a show that is committed to the craft of fantasy football. Listen, we grind every week like Albert Hainsworth trying to pass a fitness test. That's except we succeed. Oh, yeah. There we go. Nice we save. succeed. This show is about everything to do with fantasy football. It's about all kinds of leagues. It's about your dynasties, your keepers, your standards, your PPRs, your auctions, your DFS. It's about that year round NFL, but mostly this show is about you. It's about your team, your questions, your conundrums, your draft, your starts, your sits, your grade, the trades, your league, your team, and your championship aspirations. Not aspirations championship oh and your championship and we are here to give you an edge that's what we try to do each and every week in the world of fantasy football and we would not exist without you the listener so we say thank you thank you to the foot clan yes thank you very much that thank you for like, listening like an abraham lincoln speech you know well done it is almost august it is time to get time for it abraham time, lincoln speeches. it is time to get serious <laughs> about fantasy football we have got an incredible show for you today we have Roto World's Evan Silva on the show today. Wait, whoa, hold on. Yeah, wait, wait, no, hold on. That wasn't um, the Evan Silva. Yeah, the Evan Silva. We didn't even get time to get people excited about this. No, it, the, it was a whirlwind. It happened really quick. Yep. And he's on the show. Yeah, he's on the show today. We're talking uh, some polarizing players in the uh, upcoming draft. We're also talking some DFS. Everybody, we have so many emails, so many people who want to talk daily fantasy sports, and now you can play. You oh, can yeah. go on to FanDuel, sign up, use the promo code BALLERS. You get up to $200 match. Preseason fantasy is starting soon. Preseason yeah. DFS. Are you excited? I am excited. I am excited. And it's a good time for DFS because it's it's right. It's like as a, as a group, if you haven't played Daily Fantasy yet, it's right on the cusp of becoming like the next biggest game. And this is the time when you can still take advantage of it. I, I think jump it's Jump in. Jump in. It's fine. You can play in the preseason, which I think is just... Awesome, crazy because yeah, you can. That's go, like betting on preseason games. I mean, no, it is. But I mean, like you better you, know what you're talking you have to, about. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. That's why you got to listen to Evan Silva today. They got a new podcast coming out too. We'll talk about that. We also got some news and notes from around the league today, and we're going to answer some listener questions. And um, you guys want to talk listener league for a second? Ooh, we probably should. We we have had a lot of entries and we thank every single person that has sent us an entry to the listener league, the official listener league of the fantasy footballers podcast. So we got an update for you. If you have not heard back from us, um, you're probably sitting in our entries, uh, basket. Yeah. We've got a basket. Yeah. Mike weaved it when he it's was in got, Hawaii. It's mm-hmm. got eggs. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we have 10 of 12 spots filled. That's the gist. <laughs> so two, there, there's two, two left. Two left. There has been some fire. Oh man, Some you know, I, I oh wish we goodness. could post everything. I don't know how we can post or no. who would or wouldn't, but some of these entry league uh, entries are, are are great, and people would want to see them, I believe. So we're in the home stretch. We're going to get that league together and get it going. So if you want a spot, you got one more chance to impress us. We're not going to tell you what to do other than don't send me your Yahoo trophy case. Yeah, that's my only rule. Or do send unless us. it's an actual trophy case that uh, you have built in your <laughs> home, in which case you can send it to me. Yeah. Yeah, you can send that. But two or a spots briefcase left. full of ten thousand dollars on marked si- bills. Yeah, if you're sending we us, s- we're allowing that, right? <laughs> sure, unmarked bills. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be traced. 
You can send your entries to mail at the fantasyfootballers.com. Mail at the fantasyfootballers.com. Don't send your regular questions there because we'll ignore them. Yep. Send your regular questions to the submit a que- click the submit a question button on our website, the fantasyfootballers.com, and we'll get them there. So that's the update for the listener le- 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 the listener league. So let's go ahead and read a review. I almost made it through all that. <laughs> so close. Review Asaurus Rex. This one comes in from Knuckles1836. Thanks, Knuckles. It's what you want, five stars. He or she says, there is a lot of nonsense when it comes to fantasy football podcasts, but this one stays on point and gives you what you want and expect while staying entertaining. Really enjoy how they talk fact and opinion and distinguish which is which. Hashtag Foot Clan. Thanks, Knuckles. (laughs) It's almost impossible for people to distinguish when I talk opinion and fact, because they are so oh well my, oh my goodness. goodness gracious. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Our, they, they have to decipher that by our eye rolling into the back of our heads. <laughs> uh-huh. our oh, no, it goes all the way around for me. Yep. Well, thank you, Knuckles. Uh, tell hello to Sonic yeah. the Hedgehog. Yeah, I, I thought that was coming. Uh, and we just want to remind all the Foot Clan and all the, the new listeners out there, if you want to practice mock drafting at lightning speeds, we're talking two to three minutes. Sonic the Hedgehog speed. Perfect. <laughs> you want to be the blue blur, you throw on the red shoes, you cl- collect some rings and go to fantasydraftwizard.com. <laughs> you can blast out like 10 mocks in about 20 minutes. And if you haven't listened to our mock draft episodes, you can go back on iTunes, listen to those. They're also on YouTube, our YouTube channel, and uh, get some perspective. We've drafted through 10-team, 12-team mocks. We've done PPRs, and we do them all through fantasydraftwizard.com. And you get to draft against – you can choose the expert consensus where – they, they've collected all kinds of really smart fantasy minds and put their rankings together or just ADPs of, from ESPN. Uh, there's a lot of options for you to test your test your might. <laughs> that is their motto. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure if that's right. All right, let's talk news and notes. News and notes from around the league. I'm excited to talk about this first one. Okay. Because I don't think anybody knows what Devontae Parker is, but there is news that uh, Dolphins coach Joe Philbin has come out and said that first-round wide receiver Devontae Parker will be ready for week one. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. That's how excited you are. That You know, so, when I see that, I see good news that I take poorly. Well, the situation in Miami is you have Landry and you have Stills and you have Jordan Cameron. Yep. And, and Greg Jennings. And, and, yeah, Greg, we, and Greg Jennings. And so you already have a, a big mix. And so if, Deba- if Devontae Parker is eased in, which he most certainly will be, yes. you're not expecting things from him fantasy-wise in the beginning of the season. Now, he's come out. He said everything is perfect. But Devontae Parker missed seven games of his senior season with a foot injury. Right. And so is this – I mean, is there any potential, I guess, of an ODB? where he misses the beginning of this season, builds a rapport with Tannehill. I mean, Landry's almost assuredly going to lead the team in receptions. But is is Parker, does he have a chance to be the second guy? No, I, I think he might have a chance I mean, to be the second guy by from the end one. of the year. But being in the pre-draft season, I'm really kind of staying away from him because I, I think based on this report, what it said to me was he's not going to go on the inactive pup. He's not going to necessarily have to miss games, but he's barely going to play week one. He's barely going to play week two. And when you draft a rookie and you don't know who they are yet, and the season kicks into form, I think that Devontae Parker will either, in most drafts, go undrafted or will be dropped. Now, if you're talking about a dynasty league, Devontae Parker is very valuable. But this, to me, says that he's going to he's going to miss the beginning games of the season from being relevant, and he'll be on the waiver. And I, I'm less likely to draft him personally the more that I think about the offense because the difference between ODB missing the first few games and coming back, and granted he was found on waivers, is the offense. I, I, don't, I don't see the Dolphins putting up huge – they're not trying to be you know a, a McAdoo-style offense that's putting up a lot of points. Mike, what do you think? Well, I, I disagree with that statement yeah, because they're, they're, uh, they're the laser – Eagles hybrid down there where they want to score a lot of points. but And I think that Parker has the potential to be a maybe a baby version of what Does anybody Odell want to water bet me right now? I, I, I have gotta, a, gotta, uh, No, I'm going to tell. but I don't well, know what I, we're talking about. I, I, do, I do not like Kenny Stills. And I do not think Greg Jennings is 
I mean, he's the oldest 30 whatever year old he is in the history of the world. And so I don't think other than Landry that there's a lot of talent there. So I, I'd water bet anybody that he's the number two fantasy scorer for that team. Five. On the season? On the season. Oh, sign me up. Mike, you want in? No. All right. Water All right. bet. That's fine. Okay, That's fine. So That'll be let, an exciting one. Let me clarify this. The official bet is Parker, you, number the number two or higher fantasy wide receiver for Miami. On the season. On the Does season. Jordan Cameron count? Did, did it when you asked? I'll be on. You tell Honestly, me. Honestly, yes, because you already That's said fine. That's who fine. the past receivers are. And you and, oh, Cameron and Jason's in. always one to take an advantage. So. Oh, yeah. All right. Cardinals have signed tight end Jermaine Gresham to a one year contract. He is only 27 years old, gentlemen. Wow. Really? He is 27. That blows my mind. <laughs> Listen to this. He has been in the league. Uh, he has five seasons in the league. His catch totals have been 52, 56, 64, 46, 62 in his five seasons. He's only 27. And now the da- and now the downside because the Cardinals were the worst team in the league in touchdowns from the tight end position last year. They put up a total stat line across four tight ends of 50 catches for 588 yards and one touchdown. So, the that, fantasy that was news. that was John Carlson, that was Hausler, that was Fells, that was Nicholas. So this year it's Gresham and it's Nicholas. Yeah, the fantasy rev, uh, the fantasy relevant news here I think is more in having a more capable tight end for blocking as well. Uh, yeah. So Absolutely. you're talking about David Johnson and Andre Ellington having the ability to run more because not only have you improved the offensive line, but you've got a tight end that can that can block and tight end tight ends that can block help you running to the outside. And that is really the type of runners we have in Arizona. So I think it's a – I mean, as a, as a personal Arizona Cardinal fan, I love the signing. As a fantasy I could guy, not believe he's 27. Me either. I, and Doesn't you he know, feel about 34? In the offseason, yeah. I gave him a lot of love because he's a talented player. Yeah, the, and I completely agree with Chase, and I think it improves the team, the Arizona team, with not, not just the run game. And their but, offense is already but, improved in the running game. Yeah, but pro- also protecting Carson Palmer – where if you look at tight ends in an Aryan system, that's usually not they're not a pass thriving catchers. fantasy no. position, which is a little bit baffling to me that Gresham chose to sign in Arizona when he when there was rumors of maybe the Packers were looking at him, the Saints were looking at him. Well, uh, how, yeah, one year deal. And it. How was Arizona the best choice? But I mean, where it's Super Bowl. That's how. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but but Arizona, the way Arians looks at tight ends, just look at Troy Nicholas, where we spent a second-round pick on a tight end who blocks. Yeah. So Arians clearly has a, a an affinity for a blocking tight end. All right, I want to get to this last piece of news because I just want to talk about him in general. I've had some people ask me questions. There have been some reports that some teams have seriously considered signing free agent Ray Rice earlier in this offseason. And so I've had a lot of people ask me, oh, is Chris Johnson, is Ray Rice, are they worthy late-round flyers? Now, Ray Rice is 28 years old, but he's got 1,400 carries on that body of his, and he averaged 3.1 a carry last time he played in the NFL. So, If Ray Rice plays, I will absolutely pick him up. I will never in any league draft Ray Rice because I don't think he's going to find a team, but if he finds a team, this news shows it clearly will not come preseason when media and all that's going it would only be able to come through an injury in the year when 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 it's a desperation move but if he is picked up I would pick him up off the waivers but don't draft him because he I don't think he's ever going to play another snap in the NFL Ray Rice you know that there's the movie the money pit Ray Rice <laughs> yeah, will be, Tom will, Hanks Ray Rice will be the money pit for fab this year because because he'll gonna, sign with somebody it after will an injury from an injury and they yeah. will come in and people will blow a gigantic portion of their fab for a guy who was completely... Define, define fab for people who don't know what you're talking about. So fab is free agent acquisition budget, and that's it's instead of waivers, players uh, or leagues can choose to have a weekly bidding for free agents instead of just a, this waiver order. It's spectacular. If you're not using it, we really suggest you try it out, and it'll win you over. And so back to your point, people are going to blow their money on Ray Rice. He's going to sign with some team that loses their and starter. he's going to stink. Yeah, you're probably right. The thing he about was, Ray Rice, he hold, on, hold on. on the, the yeah, thing but, about Ray Rice is, even if he's not good between the tackles, he has been a 50 plus catch back out of the backfield. That's fair. Yep. And the last year that you're referring to, when he was awful, I mean, coming in the following year, the year you know that he didn't do so good in the media, um, 
he was he was primed. I mean, you know, Andy, I was talking about him that year because he he had lagging injuries the year before. His offensive line was terrible. You were terrible. talking about. I was talking mostly about so how bad the offensive line for the Ravens were that last year when he had regressing numbers and how good they were going to be the following year. Yeah, but that's not proof that Ray Rice is any good. No, no, no. But I'm saying if you want to if you want to talk about Ray Rice being bad his last year, I, I don't think it he was, was him. He was terrible. I know, and I don't oh, okay. think it was him. Yeah. And that might be the case. That's the unknown. I mean, the the thing that we're talking about is uh, Ahmad Bradshaw. I mean, how much did he have left? He went into Indianapolis in that I situation. I would much rather have Bradshaw than Well, I, I would too. My point is if he walks into a situation like that, like Bradshaw walked into, maybe he produces. I don't yeah, know. Maybe. But I'm not I'm not drafted. I'm not taking a flyer. No, so. never. All right, let's get to the main event. We're going to talk to Evan Silva from Roto World, the senior editor over there, and uh, see what he has to say about some DFS and some – Big news in the fantasy world. You talking to me? The fantasy footballers are now joined by the master of the matchup, Evan Silva from Roto World. He also just started a brand new podcast, Roto World Fan Duel NFL Pod, where they focus on DFS and specifically Fan Duel, as you can tell, because it's right in there in the name. Uh, why don't you say hello to everyone, Evan? Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, thanks for having me on. Hey, well, thank you for joining us. And what we wanted to talk through with Evan was some high ADP guys who are kind of polarizing. They are splitting the fantasy community where you really love these guys or you completely hate them because they're going way too high. Or you just don't know what to do with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's mm -hmm. all, also too. So we're going to start with the big guy. He's back. He was gone all last year, but Adrian Peterson is uh, from Fantasy Football Calculator right now is going 102, so basically the first overall pick. You're talking a guy who has had one season below 1,250 yards. He's had double-digit touchdowns every year. He was gone last year, and but there's still a lot of smart people who are saying he's not even a top-five running back. So what is your take on Peterson? I definitely lean in the positive direction on Adrian Peterson. There are also a lot of smart people who believe he should go number at 1.01. 1 .01. Uh, Mike Clay is one of those guys, as is uh, our Adam Leviton. Um, look, he's playing his, in the best offense he's played in since Brett Favre was around. I mean, I, I tend to believe that he's got a, a lot of juice left uh, at age 30. The last time we saw he saw him play, he looked really good. Um he, you know, I, 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 I like how the offense is coming together. Uh, North Turner has a history of getting uh, RBs heavily involved in the passing game. And um, that's, you know, an area where Adrian Peterson, I mean, he's never been a great pass catcher, but he always could have been used a little bit more because that's a means of getting Adrian Peterson into space. And, you know, when Adrian Peterson gets into space, yeah, not, you know, not a bad thing. People yeah, get afraid. Just dis destruction on the football field. So if you um, had, if you had to think, why are these other people down on him? What could you, besides, is it just age, or that he was gone last year? Yeah, it's it's age, and it's the fact that Adrian Peterson only played in one game last year, um, and, and the, you know those are the negative factors. To me, the positive outweigh the negatives. Uh, by, by a good margin on Adrian Peterson, and he's a guy that I want to bet on. I'm willing to draft him in the top five. I don't think he's the 1.01. 1 .01. I got Le'Veon and uh, Jamal Charles and Eddie Lacy uh, all in the mix as well, uh, but I, I think he's definitely a top five fantasy pick. And that's kind of our position too. I think he's in that top five guaranteed for us. We don't see a reason mm -hmm. to run away from him. I want to talk a little bit about a guy who uh, also was heavily involved in the passing game years ago and that's frank gore in from mm -hmm. 06 to 2010 he averaged 51 receptions a year kind of pre-harbaugh era moving teams he's with the colts now i mean what do you see with him because right now he's a third round pick i have him as an rb1 yeah this is definitely another guy who i lean positive on you know we have a lot of factors to consider with these players and I don't want to get caught hanging my hat on one of those particular factors when there are a lot of other factors to consider. Um, Frank Gore is you know, going from a team that ranked toward the bottom of the NFL in uh, running back targets last year, over the past four years under Greg Roman actually, uh, to a team that last year ranked uh, 11th in the NFL in passing game targets to running backs. He, you know, his, his receiving usage is going to spike. 
And he's also going from an offense that last year was one of the worst in the NFL uh, to a Colts offense that is one of the best in the NFL, which is going to, you know, which, which should definitely spike his scoring chances. Um, if you look at the efficiency of running backs not named Trent Richardson uh, <laughs> o- over the past two years in Indianapolis, you know, Donald Brown, who is terrible, uh, averaged over five yards a carry. Uh, Ahmad Bradshaw was at like 4.6 or 4.7 last year. Dan Heron, uh, who's a six-round guy, yeah. you know, pr- you know, probably should be bouncing around the NFL, which actually he did before he landed in Indy. Uh, he averaged four and a half yards a carry. So th- there are a lot of lot more positive indicators than negative uh, to me with Frank Gore. Last year, his yards per carry average uh, was the it was his second best in the last five years. I mean, I think he's got plenty of juice in the tank to produce in you know that maybe the NFL's best offense. Yeah, and I think for fantasy owners too, he's he's just a, a stalwart when it comes to health, and that's one yeah. of the things that you know he just hasn't missed a game in so long. So, and so moving to a wide receiver who is, he this guy is especially I think uh, drawing a line in the community. That's Martavis Bryant who had a very low snap count last year. He wasn't even played the first six games. Uh, and we, we affectionately call him here because we are huge Back to the Future fans, so we call him Marty McBride. Feel free to drop <laughs> that one if you want. But All right. Uh, yeah, so, no, you, you guys can keep that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, the, but we what we keep pushing of why we like him is the biggest game of the year, the playoffs, his snap shot up to 83%. In the big game, you want your big players. It, that's just how – anything other than that is a ridiculous thought. So where do you stand on Bryant in the Steelers' offense? Yeah, that was going to be a piece of, of my take on him as well. Uh, he was a 43% player uh, when he started playing from week, se- week 7 to week 17. Uh, and then, you know, in, in the crucial game – uh, where they didn't have Le'Veon, which they won't they won't have him for the first few games of 2015. Uh, Martavis Bryant became a starter over Marcus Wheaton, and he played 82% of the Steelers' offensive snaps, and he saw nine targets, which was a season high. I think he had like six for 60 in a TD or something like that, or maybe five for 56. Yeah, five for 61. In a TD. Yeah, so um, – you know, I, you you, you got to love his uh, his makeup physically. You got to love the offense that the he offense, plays in. Yeah, yeah the, the thing is, that I don't know. He reminds me a lot of the, the former uh, Bengals wide receiver, Chris Henry. Uh, and he never became, and maybe it was because he was playing with Chad and Hoosh, but he was never a high-volume receiver. You know, Ma- Malcolm Floyd uh, was never a high-volume receiver. And it's possible that Martavis, you know, kind of ends up in that range it's also possible that he could end up in the aj green range uh because that that's that's another guy who he's built very much like actually has better speed uh than aj green uh, i don't know the, for me the range of outcomes on him is pretty wide I, i'm definitely taking him in drafts when i think he's a value which starts to be the late fifth uh, early sixth round um, he, he's a guy who I'm definitely going to be firing up in DFS against New England in that first game. You know, New England lost all their cornerbacks, um, and Le'Veon will be out. So Martavis Bryant's snap percentage and target should should really see a spike there with Le'Veon out. And, and then it'll be you know it, I think that how the the Steelers use him when Le'Veon comes back might hinge a little bit on how he performs in those first three games. Um, you know, so I, I, I still think he's dicey, but, man, I'm very, very intrigued by him. Yeah, that's a good word for it. He, he's super interesting just because of mm-hmm. the small sample size but high potential and, and that offense itself. And another guy that, yeah. that we've debated a lot on the show, we've made several bets about, and, and I'm rolling around too, but Justin Forsett doesn't get a, a lot of love because he's bounced around. Uh, he's been that career backup. Obviously, he had a great year last year. He, he's sneaking into the second round now in standard leagues. But do you have some general thoughts on Forsett? I mean, do you think anybody behind him, I guess, has the potential to steal some workload, or do you just see Tressman and that offense and another good year for him? He's not the easiest guy. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that he's the safest guy uh, because they do have Buck Allen there and they do have Talia Farrow and Justin Forsett, you know, leading up to last year, he was nothing more than a change of pace third down back, you know, and – 
you know, he, he's old and there, there, there are a number of, you know, factors there that scare might, people might, off a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah scare, scare people off a little bit. Um, and really it's still hard, even though he kind of did it last year, it's still hard to envision him as a guy who's going to carry the ball 270 times. You know, he probably isn't going to be that guy. He's probably, he might get 220 carries and they mix in the other two RBs. Uh, but Justin Forsett gets a, 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 a big share of the receiving work. And mm-hmm. that's what you got to hope for. Again, it, it's a great offensive line. The offense should be above average. I don't think they're going to be setting record, records, but it should be above average. And, you know, Trestman's history of funneling targets to the running backs goes back too far with too many beneficiaries, right, right. I think, to, to think that that's, that that's a fluke. Makes sense. Well, uh, let's let's transition then. Let's talk some uh, some DFS again. Evan Silva, Adam Leviton, uh, Roto World's FanDuel NFL podcast, brand new. We listened to that first show. Looking forward to it. Should be exciting. Um, so, where talk a little bit for our listeners that are maybe new to the daily fantasy sports game? What is your approach? I mean, I know you can't summarize that all in in a minute or two but what are some things that maybe a brand new player overlooks and what are some of the things you really pay attention to Mm, good questions (laughs) Um, in in, in a couple minutes (laughs) yeah you know i i the one of the ways that i like to do it personally and you know there there will be some people that advise against it but i have had success would be every week pick out a wide receiver who is like at min price and start your lineup that way. Um, because, you know, that obviously frees up a lot of money. Uh, and, you know, if the guy, and because it helps you elsewhere, if the guy only has four catches for 40 yards, you know, you, you can still survive that. I mean, pretty easily. And then if he scores a TD, like you're in prime position. Uh, that really worked for me last year. I think it was against Indianapolis. Uh, with Terrence Williams late in the year, he had two TDs, uh, and uh, it also happened because the the price on him had just fallen off a cliff late in the season because he wasn't doing anything. Um, and, and then there was another one, oh Dontrell Inman, I think it was in week seventeen <laughs> uh, in the in the Keenan Allen role. Keenan Allen didn't play in week seventeen, and, and Dontrell Inman had like friggin' nine catches for 90 yards or something like that. And he was, you know, he was min price. And that really helped, you know, me with the rest of my roster construction. So that's that's maybe one thing to just consider. I don't know that, you know, the, the, the true DFS gurus would always sign off on that. But that's just something that I like to do. And another quick strategy question where we – are in redraft are we're all aboard on the waiting on quarterback streaming quarterback get get the value late how do you feel about that for dfs because of a lot of the people i've talked to they all swear by you have to launch a top tier quarterback oh no 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 um i mean you need to be open to to both ways to go about it i don't know if you guys know chris raybon from four for four football right yeah. Uh, but yeah he's He's excellent. He really drilled home the concept of, you know, the min price quarterback. The, the quarterbacks have a, a floor, really, uh, in term, terms of how many points they're going to score. Like, they can have a bad game or really not do a whole lot, and they'll get you 10 points, you know. Um, well, Chris Raybon really drilled home that point that you can use those min price quarterbacks. Uh, it happened with Derek Anderson twice. He was solid in both of those starts. Uh, and then the, the real cherry on the top was, Ryan Fitzpatrick uh, late in the year with the the six team. Oh yeah, game. the six. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you did know, you play it, him it, that week? Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I actually. And he I will never forget. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I, I had I had him and DeAndre Hopkins oh. and Trey Mason went off that week. That was a, that was a big big week. So you, you like to stack then, or is that just happened to be that week? You stack a quarterback wide receiver. Yeah, no, I, I, I usually try to stack. Yeah, no, no question. All right, so a we'll wrap it up here. Um, but let's just say, so where can, where can people find you, Evan? You can find me on rotoworld.com and on Twitter, I'm at Evan Silva. Okay, and, and the show, the, the, the FanDuel show, is it just launched 
There's only one episode. But if you listen through, you know that there's going to be some fantastic information. And not just for daily players. Yeah, they're going to be breaking down uh, like minimum guy prices like he was talking about, which will be applicable for redraft leagues if you're trying to scrounge the wire for a, a guy who might be available. So the the final question, Evan, uh, I'm super not, important. Yeah, this is this is probably the most important thing you've asked been okay. asked in your career. So no pressure. Oh gosh. Uh, <laughs> but we t- for some reason we've gotten in the habit of we talk a lot about Oreo cookies. So we're wondering when, if your preference of Oreos are you a single, a double stuff, or a mega stuff man? I, you know. I haven't eaten an Oreo in like years. Uh, <laughs> we should have learned. We should have learned this about Evan way before we asked him to come on. That's devastating. All right, but so uh, when, but in your I, years, I, I would probably just go with the single and, and okay. like eat a lot of them. You know, I, okay. I quantity, them quantity. Stuff. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we we really want to thank Evan for coming on. It it was a, a big thrill for our show to get him on. So uh, thank you so much, Evan. Yeah. Thank thank you, fellas. Thanks for having me on. Thanks again to Evan Silva for taking the time to join us on the fantasy footballers and if you or any of your friends want to get involved with FanDuel you can head over to on the internet yeah. FanDuel.com it will ask you would you like to use a promo code and you say darn tootin FanDuel my, my, say that out loud darn tootin FanDuel my promo code is ballers that's very easy to spell and say and and by, it rhymes by, with dollars. Yeah, not only using the code do you help the show, you help yourself because they will match your first deposit up to $200. All right, let's get into the mailbag. Oh, mailbag. Mailbag! Whoa! My that, that was because, yeah, you were gone, so you got to get an extra what? one in there. This dude butchered it. Jason no, butchered it last purpose. week. I heard it. It was it, a shout-out to you, Mike. I appreciated it. You're welcome. It was, it, what was funny is when it plays the it because the guitar goes. I haven't heard just the guitar. <laughs> I know it forever. sounds so strange, and I kind of freaked out when I heard it. All right, we're gonna answer some listener questions, some voicemail questions today. If you want to answer a question, you can come on the show and be a host. <laughs> no, <laughs> Jason I was heard that. Where you were going? Yeah, with if you that. if you want to ask a question, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. dot com. Click on the Submit a Question button in the upper right-hand corner. We got a brand new form up there. It's really easy. You put in your question, and you can actually, if you want to answer really fast, you can actually choose uh, 48 hours, 24 hours, 8 hours. We'll get back to you that fast because we're here for the people. So go on there. Go to thefantasyfootballers.com. Click Submit a Question. Um, You can also call us. What's the number? 302-464-TFFB. That sounds right. I know. I didn't have it in the doc, so I was I was kind of putting you guys on the spot. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> but, uh, hey, if you call and leave a voicemail, the only thing we ask is that you keep them brief and to the point because we can't play like 10 minutes of you on the air, as fun as that might be for you. I had a guy call in this week, and I think his name was like Johnny Hot Dogs. <laughs> Whoa! And he like was trying to compete with Tony, Tony Meatball. Meatball, but I didn't put him on the show because... Oh, well, sorry, Johnny. It wasn't very funny. He so. got a shout-out. Yeah, he did, so... Hey, this is AJ Heck. I have a question about my upcoming fantasy football draft. Long-time listener. Uh, like the show. I can either keep Arian Foster with the sixth pick in the draft, uh, Demarius Thomas with the 11th pick in the draft, or Randall Cobb with the 27th pick in the draft. It's a eight-team league, standard draft, uh, standard rules. Uh, and again, I have the sixth pick in an eight-team league. Thanks, guys. All right, what say you guys? <laughs> I must have missed something. Eight, eight team league. Eight team league that has Harry, twenty-seven eight. rounds. No, no, no. That's pick. That's total oh, pick. Okay. <laughs> it's like what? So he can take is this. He, he can take Arian Foster with the sixth pick, DT with the eleventh, or Cobb with the twenty-seventh pick. It's not really a hard thing for me. Yeah. Well, what's difficult is you're not really getting value on anybody unless you take Cobb, but. I agree. I don't want Cobb at 27 in a standard league. It's almost just straight up. In so, which case, I mean, I guess you could argue for DT at 11 because... that's And that's what I'm going to take. That is I yours? Would, I would go Foster at 6. I think because you're not getting value on any of these guys... Did he say PPR? He said standard. Stan- yeah, I'm taking Foster. Yeah. Because you're not getting draft value over where they would be drafted, I just want the best guy who I would want the most. Especially in an eight-team league, you have to have... Premier talent. Yep. Which those guys are, but I'm with you. 
Uh, all right, let's go to another one. Hey, what's up, dudes? Just a dude that caller, just asking about how to potentially keep uh, basically a new league intact. Um, I'm an avid football fan, but it's hard for me to get all my members together um, and, like, ready to rock and roll for the preseason. I like to keep things, like, serious, but on a fun note, active but still competitive. Uh, what are your recommendations? Seems like everyone already has, like, a league they've had for 10 years, and I'm trying to develop that. So just want to know what you recommend, and uh, thanks for doing the podcast. And that's a great question. How do you how do you start a league that you you want to take seriously? You want everybody involved to, to take it seriously because having a league with five or six guys that care and three or four that are just off in space, that's no fun. So how do you how do you do that? I've got a I've got a list of things I wrote down. <laughs> Here are my first things. You're like come. a stenographer well i mean yeah. we've got a league that's going on year nine here a dynasty league mm -hmm. so so we've learned a few things uh i would i would say that if you want to have it go past year one most leagues that do that are keeper leagues they're leagues where you keep a guy and you have something in the off season and in the off season you're allowed to do trades and do things like that i think that from from my history those are the leagues where you don't quit in the off season because you've got something in the game. Because during the season, you were making moves towards that and for that. And you were thinking about it. And then the other two things I would think is traditions, like make some, and friendships. Yes. Yes. The the the, sh the best ship is friendship. Oh, very well said. Uh, but the only thing I'll throw in, a, a way I believe we stay so active, our league, is we have a Facebook group that and we're all Facebook junkies, so to speak. And it keeps everyone together because you get notified when there's a new post. And it just, as long as so you have... So much better than the forums that a lot of the leagues Yeah, and provide. if you have somebody who is a locomotion of trash talk, <laughs> it really does keep things going because then everyone wants to shut that person up or have their own thing to say. So just having a group where people can easily communicate helps out. Yeah, and, and kick out the bad members. I mean, I know that sounds hilarious, but if you have guys that aren't, you know, playing, kick them out, bring somebody else in, make sure don't start a 15 team league or I mean a 16 team league with, you know, four serious people, start a smaller league, expand it over the years. I think our league in the first few years was a 10, 10 man league before you were there. It might've even been smaller. Yeah. Before I was born. Yep. All right. This question comes in from Matt. He says, Hey guys, new listener, new listener. And I really enjoy the show. He has his eye on Justin for set just as we do. But one thing that he keeps dwelling on is his inability to score inside the 10-yard line. He looked at his touchdown log from last year. Only one of his touchdowns was inside the 9. He's worried a little bit if that is his high watermark because of so much luck, touchdown luck. So can they depend on him? Can he depend on Justin Forsett this year under Trustman? What do you think? I don't think I have you a, can I have a few thoughts. I don't but. think you can depend on anyone. It's fantasy. You roll the dice. However, what I love about Trustman was that Two years ago, we forget that Matt Forte was not a goal line back. They did not use Matt Forte inside the 10, uh, or three years ago now. When Tressman got there, he just didn't take him off the field. He left his guy out there and, and used him. So that, to me, is one of the things I like the most. And I also think that it's not so much touchdown luck. I think that their their scheme and, and the ability of, of him as a, as a pass-catching back is going to get those 10-yard out runs. So I, I, I'm not too worried about it, but I would say this. I'm definitely, definitely, because I don't think they're going to use Telefero that much. Um, I, I'm definitely handcuffing Forsett with Buck Allen. And Forsett had eight touchdowns in the red zone. So it's not like they weren't giving him carries inside the 20. He just happened to be busting off long runs. So I, I, I think really what he the biggest thing here is that I, I don't think he scores as much this year. I personally do not. But I think what you're doing here is you're pointing out in this question, he's pointing out kind of the compensation for that which is Tressman comes in and he's going to get more passes in the passing game. So his baseline should still say pretty good. I mean, he's pretty safe. If uh, you're in a half point or a full point PPR, yeah. Yeah, he's his dominant. baseline is fantastic because he should get 70 catches. Yep. Any other thoughts on that? No, I love, I love Justin. Forsett. That's just kind of the reason we like him. I mean, he, he still has questions. He's an older guy. He's bounced around, you know, every, all the things that uh, Silva said earlier are, are there, but, um, just great opportunity with Trustman. Let's go to another voicemail. Hey, guys. Nate here out in uh, eastern Idaho. Uh, new listener to the podcast. Really enjoying it. 
in a 12-team PPR league, one point per reception, half a point per rush attempt, trying to decide who to keep that would con- be considered my first-round pick. Aaron, I apologize, not Aaron Rodgers, Adrian Peterson, Antonio Brown, or Marshawn Lynch. Which of those three should I keep and have counted as my first-round pick? Thanks for the help, guys. Don't hit the bu- don't hit the bell yet. I'm did ready I, though. I'm ready I to hit. I just want to clarify. Did I hear half point you, per carry? You heard half point per carry. Okay. Which oh. is why I'm ready to smash this bell. Yeah, and, you, you can and smash PPR. it. PPR. You can hit it. Adrian right. Peterson. Adrian. Oh. Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah. Uh the reason I was going to have you hold up for a second and we can talk about this for a minute, but in a lot of PPR leagues I see people come in and they're asking me questions about it's one of those guys in the top 5 running backs or Antonio Brown. Yeah, I mean, is there a situation where you're taking Brown? Uh, in in non half point <laughs> per carry leagues, yeah, that's I, what I. I think, that's where I was trying to get to. Is, is I've seen Antonio Brown go as high as number two in a PPR, where I've loved the roster that drafted him afterwards. So I, I am not at all opposed to having that conversation. But if you're getting a half point per carry, and Adrian Peterson's going to get near 300 carries in a PPR. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, he's going to get 50 catches, too. That's an extra 150 points on the baseline. We were just, you know, celebrating Justin Forsett's 70 receptions. Yeah. Yep. Give me, yeah, give me AP so. all Give me AP no, I, I agree. all I agree. day. Wow. <laughs> wow, you guys are I know. special people. All right. That's hey, this is Dugan from Illinois. Um, I'm seeing King and Allen go late in a lot of drafts, and I'm wondering if there's any chance he can bounce back, uh, seeing as Gates is suspended for four games and he lose Royal. Um. Yeah. Just let me know. Oh well. Definitely, there's a chance that Keenan Allen can bounce back. He's he's a 23 year old wide receiver. He's Philip Rivers' number one target. And really, when you look at last year, it was it was kind of enigmatic because he's coming off a 1,000 yard season. He had 70 receptions. Well, last year he caught 77 passes. So it's not like he dropped off the map, but he he just didn't get in the end zone as much. He had half the amount of touchdowns. Which I mean, touchdowns go all over the place in fantasy. You know that. And uh, his his average yards per catch was down. And so um, he had some good games, but most people were disappointed in him. But at that age, with that quarterback in the system, I, I don't see why he can't bounce back and give you 80 catches. Yeah, I'd like him to bounce back. I I think the, it will be somewhere between the two seasons. I don't think that he'll be what he was his rookie year, but he won't be as disappointing as he was last year. So, And especially these first four games where with Gates out – Somebody is going to have to to carry the load even more with Gates gone because maybe Green, Ladarius Green, can do it. But I think Keenan Allen and Stevie Johnson are the biggest. Uh, they get the most upside from the Gates suspension. So I, Keenan Allen, because he's going so late, or not really, really late, but later, he's a great guy to grab. Yeah, last year he was drafted in the third round because Which, people – That's why it sucked. Right, yep. and that's why he sucked so bad was – not because he because he heard so bad. everybody was drafting him in the third, <laughs> and he couldn't perform. Right now, you got it. <laughs> Anxiety. Right yeah. now, he's, he's going a young the, guy. <laughs> he's going in the fifth round, and I. <laughs> and I think that uh, the two guys that are going right ahead and behind of him, Sam, Sammy Watkins and Golden Tate. Oh, give me Keenan Allen. Yeah, All day. I agree. All day. No, he's not Adrian Peterson. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. This question comes in from David. From how do you pronounce that? You, Pocatello. You, you've got your mouse right over the. I can't read it. It's not me. Pocatello. Oh yes, it is. David. From, <laughs> yeah, it is. David from Pocatello. Pocatello. Where is that? Pocatello. Man. I'm looking it up. Yeah, let's find All it. All right, check it out. In the meantime, Idaho. Oh, that's a back to back Idaho questions. Wow, we're getting big how in did, Idaho. How did that happen? Do you guys want them instead of double stuff? Do you want like a big crate of potatoes? I would there much are more. rather have the double stuff. <laughs> Sorry, Potato Bill. All right, he's in a 10-team. <laughs> listen to this. Two quarterback, half-point PPR league. He needs two keepers. Um, he doesn't have to keep them. He can throw them back and just draft if the value isn't good. Here's his choices. DeMarco in the fourth. Mm. Russell Wilson in the fifth. He should be happy about that, too, in a two-quarterback. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Gore in the sixth. Macklin or Emmanuel Sanders in the eighth. Or Gates and Jordan Matthews in 15. Oh, yeah, well, I can, I can say this for sure. You're keeping two. <laughs> I mean, you've yeah, got a no, lot of good no options. Doubt. Lots of value. No chance you're throwing uh, those back. Wow. Uh, one is... I'm having a hard time deciding. I think one is an absolute lock for me. Is that DeMarco in the fourth? Nope. 
Jordan Matthews in the 15th. Nope. Okay. Both oh. of those. Those would be who I'm deciding for for my second oh, one. Oh, so Russell Wilson yeah. is your lock. Russell yes. Wilson. I think you have lock. to keep Wilson. In here. a two-quarterback league to get him in the fifth. I mean, in the fifth is decent value for where you get him in a one-quarterback exactly. league. Exactly. So. Exactly. So I think Wilson you're keeping. So how do you make this decision, Mike? Because Matthews' value is insane. It's a half-point PPR, but so is DeMarco's. I mean, the fourth round for DeMarco. Oh, man. Or a I, six for Gore. I mean, I, I'm not going to – I don't think anybody's taking Gore here, but – Yeah, the Gore in the six is I, is pretty incredible. But to me, it's between DeMarco and Jordan Matthews. I think I'm just rolling DeMarco and Wilson. I go DeMarco as well. It's a – you know, you can keep two guys, so you figure what, – what are you giving up there? Uh, fourth? Yeah. So, really, it's kind of like a sixth because you've got two rounds that are already somewhat done. So, yeah. It, yeah. What do you think, Mike? All right, all right. We're sharing one mind for that last question. All right, if you have a question of your own, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click Submit a Question. We answer questions here on the podcast. We answer them via email. We also answer them on our YouTube channel, so you can go to YouTube and look us up. Subscribe to us on there. And uh, we answer questions on Twitter, too, at the FF Ballers. If you want to connect to us directly, you can reach Mike at FF Hitman. Mm-hmm. You can reach Jason at Jason FFL. And you can reach me at Andy Holloway. You guys got anything else you want to talk about? The movement, guys. <laughs> the oh. movement. I, can, I can feel. I, I can feel the breakdown <laughs> of the league, FXX. They're shaking in their boots. Are we trying to break the wall down? Is that the... Yeah. Someone like, sent in a great email about how to... Did, did, did either of you have, see that? Oh, oh yeah, about um uh, the podcast. What was the name of the podcast? With Rafi. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're doing a really good job. They do a movie podcast. So, But anyways, back to my point. <laughs> I can feel it. Yeah. That they are, they, are, they are wearing thin, and they are thinking, man, these fantasy footballers, they got something going on. They got some... I got some snappy guys. Do we want we want to get our we want to get our ratings up? Who do, <laughs> who do we bring on to get our ratings up? But but anyways, I I have no idea if it's working. But but at the league FXX, the league for uh, listeners who don't know, the league is a is a hilarious show about people in a fantasy league and and just the final de- season, the debauchery that goes on, and they're in their final season, and we want to get on the show. And it's our last Mike, Mike really wants to get on yeah. the show. We're hey. along for the ride. <laughs> well, you know what's going to happen? I'm getting on. <laughs> and you suck. That's all right. You can be the man. Room. Room. Hey, we got a great show for everybody on Thursday. We're dropping Ooh. 15 fantasy gems for the 2015 season. Do you want to know what my favorite gym is? Yes. You got to wait and find out. Oh, Click I bait. I was going with Emerald. Ooh, very nice. That's my birthstone. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Oh, I think you know, I'm, emeralds smell like money, too. I'm an aquamarine. <laughs> All right, we'll catch you on Thursday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.